So now I'd like to introduce the next grand keynote speaker, Jay Vijayan. Uh, Jay Vijayan is an entrepreneur, engineer, inventor, and investor. Anybody looking for money, you should reach out to Jay. <laughs> and he's the founder and CEO of a startup company that is currently operating in stealth mode. And uh, he was formerly the chief information officer uh, for Tesla working for Elon Musk, the iconic entrepreneur. I don't know how many of you know how hard it takes to work for Elon. He makes you work 26 hours a day, <laughs> eight days a week. That's the calendar Elon Musk follows, and it's really hard to work for this man, but this man endured working for Elon at Tesla. Uh, he led a lot of uh, digital strategy, information system, infrastructure platform during the critical phase of the company as they were ramping up Tesla. And he was also responsible for electric car, Tesla, you know, the cutting edge technology when it comes to IT. He's a phenomenal leader. He's a very positive man. And uh, he invested about $500,000 in seed funding for Fixnix. And uh, we're really proud to have Jay come here and share his views at Icon about the autonomous car, its future, convergence of high-tech industry and automotive industry through technology advancements in big data, machine learning, and IoT. And let's give a warm welcome to Cyrus, all the way from Silicon Valley. Thank you, Del. Good morning. Very glad to be here. Um, I'm a Thai charter member in Silicon Valley, uh, so I've uh, uh, spent some time uh, with uh, Thai uh, for a few years. It's a great organization bringing um, young entrepreneurs as well as very experienced and successful and accomplished entrepreneurs. So today um, I want to talk about um, autonomous cars and then how machine learning, deep learning, and AI um, really is helping to progress the autonomous cars, bringing that to reality. And then we'll do a little bit of a fireside chat with uh, Mr. RJ King from the D-Business, and then uh, take some questions from all of you. Um, first, how many of you uh, have seen Back to the Future, the movie Back to the Future? Yes, I expect it, so it's great. So one of the all-time classic fictional movies, right? So it uh, came in 1985, 89, and 90. Uh, do you remember the date in which Marty McFly goes to the future? Anybody? Okay. So it's uh, October 21st, 2015. And what, do you, what did you see? You saw flying cars, you saw floating hover boats, and a lot many things. But we are in 2016. That hasn't happened yet. You, you don't see flying cars yet, right? But uh, the thing is, there are a few other things that they got right in that movie. So for example, flat screen TVs were not there in 1985, but that came in much, much, much earlier, many years before. And then you see video calls very similarly to what you do in Skype and many other video um, call technologies that's, that has happened. Flying cars are not here yet, but most likely autonomous cars will be much earlier than flying cars. And I also heard there is a big company working on flying cars. Probably that could be reality uh, very soon as well. So uh, technology has progressed in many areas, but many areas it's a little bit slower. So one another example where it doesn't progress that well is airplanes. There are before flying cars, many people thought airplanes could become very normal. Um, when early days, people thought like it would be, there would be days when, um, as early as starting of 20th century, that people would have personal planes flying um, for personal uh, use, which hasn't happened. But autonomous cars are here and they are real. So I'm going to talk through um, that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the clicker yet. If, can someone give me the clicker or just uh, get to the next slide? Sorry about that. OK, so we are in the Motor City. As you know, every 
company is working on um, autonomous car technology. Um, as you could see, uh, many of these brands, uh, you know, ev starting from the Silicon Valley tech companies, which is really driving. I know Sirius, Sirius uh, talked about uh, Google. Google has really pioneered in early, early uh, years of um, driving the autonomous technology. But now, the Real OEMs and manufacturers are getting involved. As you know, recently GM acquired a company called Cruise for a billion dollar. Um, that means it's, they are very, very serious about uh, getting to the autonomous car technology. So as you know, quick overview on autonomous cars. Um, many of you might have heard all of these level zero to level five um, levels of autonomy. What do they mean? Like level zero is completely manual, um, just a quick overview. Level one is very, very basic um, autonomy, uh, like cruise control. Level two is cruise control, adaptability, and assisted braking, so some level of autonomy. And then uh, level two is the cars keeping to the lanes, and then keeping the distance between the cars on the sides through sensors on, on the front, but the still driver should be uh, in a position to take control whenever necessary. And then level three, it takes the autonomy to the next level where the car makes decisions on certain things like turnings and um, other vehicles coming in, what to do in certain scenarios, but still with the driver. And then level four, maximum level of autonomy, but with the driver. And level five, is completely driverless. You don't need a driver. You don't even need a steering wheel for the car. The car itself operates. It learns. It thinks. And then it operates by itself. That's when you really get the maximum benefit of full autonomy. And every company is working on it. The race is on. I mean, this is not in any order. But from Silicon Valley, there is many of the important Silicon Valley companies are working. Um, on autonomous cars. As you can see, uh, Business Insider is saying there will be at least 10 million vehicles on the road with different levels of autonomy running um, on our streets, and people will be using it. And as you can see, the quote from Elon, where he's saying like the technology that they have will blow your mind. I and mean, this is, just shows how much investment, effort, and brain power is being invested in bringing this to reality. The role of government, um, as you know, it is encouraging, but one important cue I'll tell you when something is real, when governments start doing something about it. And I, you know, um, Sirius and um, his uh, host, when they were talking about government is very, very slow, uh, there are valid reasons, and there are many, many times there are no valid reasons other than bureaucracy. But when government is they've started doing something about it, that means it's a cue that something is going to become real. So government is engaged, and they conducted, the Department of Transportation conducted a smart city challenge um, all over the US. I think 78 um, cities participated, they shortlisted seven, and then finally, I think Columbus, Ohio won it, and then they got a grant of 40 million from the government, 10 million from one of the companies there, and then more, more than 40 million in matching grants. So these are really encouraging signs because these autonomous car technology can become reality only when the public systems embrace it, when they come together. Because the tech, like Sirius said, technology is here. In, with, with that, with machine learning, with deep learning, with AI, it can also mitigate a lot of things that even the technology doesn't provide. For example, the sensors are there, but they are not there to the level where it can handle all situations in extreme weather conditions. That is where the machine learning and deep learning can help. But on top of it, the most important thing is the public infrastructure has to be accommodating and talking to the system where the car by itself cannot go to that level five until the public systems really work seamlessly. So this is where the big data, deep learning, and machine learning comes to um, um, reality is where, sorry, when the car itself cannot do everything from its internal technology and the sensors, as you could see, just a brief overview, many of you know this, there are different things in an autonomous car, from lidars, radars, sonars. 
All of these have to work seamlessly together for the vehicle itself to operate. But more than that, in a social public environment in our streets, for this to work very safely, it has to interact with the cloud. It has to interact with other vehicles. It, it has to interact with the public systems to know what is happening with the traffic situation, what is happening in different other areas. One example I can give you is, when there is a weather changes, as all of you know, weather changes very quickly. Things would be very sunny and bright, and suddenly, within a few hours, things can change to extreme conditions. In there are when very low light, when there is snow, when there is fog, when there is rain, the sensors are not there yet to handle all of these situations. This is where I feel the big data machine learning can mitigate. Um, the example here is when the weather changes, things change on your streets. So for example, there is a new pit that has been created in your road due to weather condition change. Something happened on the road, and then there is something new that was created. So the cars bump into it. What the machine learning thing is, the car that run into that situation, it runs into that pit, should send information to the cloud, and then that information will be shared to other cars very quickly. If there's a pattern, more than one car or a few cars run into the same situation, that means the message should be sent to other cars with autonomous technology so that there is an automatic break or slowing down is applied to the cars in those situations where the sensors cannot detect everything. And this is something, the sensors will evolve, the technology will evolve, but until then, this is very, very important. Even after that, I think the machine learning and AI is going to significantly help. And like Sirius said, the, on the big data and machine learning, the technology advancement has gone through significant amount of stages. There is a lot of recognition, like you said, the photo recognition. Machines can learn between different animals and recognize what animal it is. Where the precision is evolving is, for the machine to identify between a cat and a dog, it's relatively easy. But for it to recognize between a wolf and a dog, that is where the precision is needed. So more and more learning happens. Um, another example I can give you why it's a reality is have you, uh, many of you might have visited the tire company, I think it's an American tire company, where they apply machine learning to measure the tire tread. So it takes a picture of your tire and there's a lots of pictures we went through in my company as we do the learning. You pass through hundreds and thousands of pictures of here is a benchmark and here is a different types of picture and here is how each picture will have its progression in terms of wear and tear. And the machine can tell very clearly if here is a new tire and your tire is at this level and when you apply a brake at this tire level, your safety is reduced by 70% or 30% or 40%, which is phenomenal. This has been already there. It has to just evolve to the next, next level. So big data, all of you know. The data collected from the, the car itself, all the sensors in the car, and then the data that the car is sending about the situation on the streets, and then the data that is collected from the public systems so all of these data has to be crunched in a meaningful way for the machine to start learning. In this case, the vehicle, which is connected to different systems. And then finally, AI comes into picture where the machine, based on its learning, makes the right decisions. And that is when I think it is going to be to the level, real level five of autonomy in driving. So this is just a picture showing how a car could sense everything from a person to another car in the road to a pillar or a post in the streets and everything. I think this was covered in the previous speech, but you know the situation. Majority of the accidents happen through human error. Not all the times it's because of eating and drinking and uh, phone, but many things, right? People are sometimes personally depressed, they're distracted, they're thinking about some events that happened in their workplace or um, at their home. So humans can make mistakes. It doesn't mean machines don't, mistake, don't make mistakes, but it's the humans who 
allow the machines to make mistakes. If they enter the wrong code in there, of course, the machine is going to make mistake. But it cannot make mistake by itself. So that is where the self-driving or autonomous driving is going to be significantly helpful. Again, this looks like an utopia, right? So there is no person walking and everything. But to make the point that when there is a seamless working environment, information exchange between vehicles, information exchange between the cloud, between the public systems, a lot of these situations can be avoided. So things can be very, very seamless. Safety and security is very important. Um, I think that briefly was there, a, there was a question of what happens if a situation like Terminator happens. And to be honest, uh, there is a lot of potential for that to happen in, in future if we don't take the right actions. Because the scale in which things can impact people and the systems would be significantly higher. We have to recognize that. We can't say, oh, the benefits are phenomenal. We have to just keep moving in that direction. But we have to recognize the risk as well and take action. It's not about locking your house in the physical place. Say, for example, if there is a robbery happening in your neighborhood, you, it, it's your home. You have to protect it. It's your neighborhood. You have to protect it. That's very similarly, it comes down to the internet. So it, it is your network. It is your public system. You have to protect it. So you have to take the right action to ensure all of the standards um, are met, guidelines are in place, safety mechanisms are in place. Google um, was talking about um, kill switch. When you do AI, there is an imminent kill switch in there so that they can, if something happened, they can go do a very quick kill switch to turn off the machine if the machine goes rogue. So these things has to happen. This is where collaboration, open platform, the right minds have to converge. People have to talk. The big companies have to come together, create a common platform. And that has to happen. And that very important for us to all recognize that safety and security is important but the benefits also are significantly higher. We can't just discount and say, oh, the risk is too high and we are not moving forward in this direction because whether we like it or not, things are happening. So it's better to embrace that and go make the right changes. Again, the benefits have been talked in the previous um, conversations as well, and I did discuss. I don't want to spend too much time on this and the next slide, but all of you know, I mean, one is the amount of time saved um, for each one of us. I mean, in, in Silicon Valley, where I come from, there are people who spend like anywhere between an hour to four hours in, in their car. And many times unproductive. And sometimes they, yeah, they do take calls and texts, but unfortunately it's distracted. Um, accidents happen, there are, there's a big risk. So all of those can be taken away. Think about the cost for each of those minute of your personal time. Forget about the, the monetary value, your personal value. You can spend that time with your family, your loved ones, and all of those are very, very important in today's life, right? So it's going to give back a lot of time. It's going to give back a lot of space for each one. Um, I mean, you can see there like 61 billion square foot of uh, parking space given back because um, like Sirius was saying, I mean, 90% of the time, the cars are just parked. Why? It's waste of space for parking and waste of the vehicle just sitting there. So all of those will change. So the benefits absolutely are significantly higher than the risks. So I think that's with that, I'll just conclude the slide presentation. And we'll go through a fireside chat with uh, Mr. RJ and uh, also take some questions.